Hey, what's going on? So I started writing my travels into a sort of story that eventually I wanted to turn into a, a book. I haven't really told many people about that, but I have written various portions of it and posted it on the blog. And this is actually part one. I posted this back last September, but inspired by <clears throat> my friend Travel Jersey Girl. Uh, check her out. She's been reading parts of her book chapter by chapter and posting it online. I figured I would do part one, reading it out loud and posting it on YouTube. So this is part one. Getting away felt like going home. I don't know how to better say it than that. It was as if life in the States was my life on pause, and when I left, my life would play again. This is my third solo travel backpacking trip. Trip. <clears throat> After you do it once, you can't help but work and live just to be able to be in it again. It had been half an hour since I landed in Panama City, Panama. It was now 2.30 a.m., and I was staring up at Luna's Castle. It was a popular backpacking hostel in old Panama known as Casco Viejo. Even at 2.30 in the morning, the place had an electric feel to it. The underground bar beneath the hostel pumped out music as I looked down the cobblestone street and overlooked the bay towards the city itself. The skyline was reminiscent of Miami on the beach. Hearing the buzz, I pulled the, gate door, the gated door to go in. Directly in front of me, there was a staircase leading up to the check-in desk. Straight ahead led to the stone stairs, down towards the bar, as well as a door into what I would later find out was the movie room and additional dorms. It was lights out, but the light... From the, the $1 beer cooler lit my way up the stairs. The sound of voices and laughter led me past a couple of dorms through the living room and towards the light shining through closed green painted wooden doors. A tan, curly, blonde-haired Australian girl opposite of the doors saw me and shouted, Hey, we've been waiting for you, over a rambling group of drunken backpackers. Me? I responded with curiosity. Yeah, you. Perplexed, I responded, How do you, how do you know me? You're a backpacker too, right? On an adventure, we're always waiting for others to join us. Flushed and before I could respond, a dark-skinned Panamanian girl pulled me back out of the room. You've just arrived. Do you have a reservation? She casually led me back to the dark common area towards the front reception at the top of the base of the stairs. I didn't reserve a room. I just looked you guys up when I landed and hoped you would have a, a bed available. It was true. There was something nerve-wracking about not knowing where I would go after landing a new country. That's where the magic was, on the cusp of not knowing, get prepared for anything. Well, this is one of the most popular hostels in Panama. We're always near capacity, and it looks like we don't have any beds right now, but we have some backpackers checking out tomorrow at noon. She had a Spanish accent, but was fluent in English. What, what I can do is let you sleep in the theater room that I can check you out tomorrow after some travelers move on. Sounds great. I'd appreciate it. I checked in, then she led me to the theater. It was back down and around the base of the stairs of the hostel entrance. I could tell this was a regular occurrence as other travelers were already asleep in the theater. The entrance to the theater was also the entrance to the other dorm quarters. Inside there were three levels of seating and bedding, and straight ahead were hallways to numbered dorms. I maneuvered my way up, up and over two levels of seats and backpackers, until I found a corner overlooking the room. The first night in a foreign place always kept me up. Dreams do never <laughs> dreams never do any justice to the magic of what life brings when you open yourself up to it. I was the last one up. It had never been much of a, I had never been much of a morning person. That being said, it was 7.30 and it was early for me. It was hard to tell what, what had woken me. Even at the early hour, the heat was building and my skin had been sticking to the mats. Sitting up, I looked down the levels of the theater seating and noticed the communal washroom. A dark-haired, fair-skinned girl was brushing her teeth. We caught eyes in the mirror and I quickly looked away. Rubbing the sleep from my eyes and grabbing my bag, I made my way back to the check-in desk and lounge. The walls were all brightly painted with complimentary sponge blotches creating various scenes with ocean animals, middle school bays, metal lockers lined up one wall while the group table piled with bananas reached out to the beer, pong, beer pong, ping pong table and beer fridge. It was there I met my first trip friend. His name was Jan. He was the captain of the Black Dragonfly. Quick side note, uh, check him out. He still travels back and forth. And he gives like tours and stuff. Black Dragonfly. How long are you here for? I had just sat down with my pancakes when I saw him look over the local newspaper and ask me. Me? I was confused. Yeah, how long are you here for? Looks like you speak Spanish pretty well too. He was wearing flip-flops and red tropical ba pattern button-up. Even with pale skin and laid-back Panamanian... Even with pale skin, 
the laid-back Panamanian lifestyle suited him. I'm not sure exactly. I just had to be in Nicaragua in three weeks. <clears throat> it was true. My buddy Carlos was flying into Honduras and hopping on a bus to meet me in Nicaragua. Well, there's a great Chinese food place I know if you want to go grab some lunch later. Chinese food? I asked. My ship has been stuck here for a while, so I've gotten to try a lot of food. The Chinese food is great. The sign read Coca-Cola. <laughs> this is a Chinese food place called Coca-Cola. Staring up at the sign of the corner restaurant, I turned my head and gave Ian a quizzical look. Short blonde hair and rocking some cheap, gla cheap sunglasses, you could see his, his eyes smile. It wasn't anything fancy. It felt more like a high school cafeteria than a restaurant. They even had the high school plastic trays. So what's wrong with your ship? How long are you here for? I asked as if asked as I took a bite of sesame chicken and followed up with some lo mein, taking a sip from a glass of bottled Mexican Coke. I'm hoping tomorrow. I said the last week, but the mechanic said he would have my part in today, so I'm hopeful speaking. So I'm hopeful. Speaking of today, what are you up to? I'm thinking of checking out the canal if you want to go. The Panama Canal was one of the engineering wonders of the world and a huge attraction. It wasn't at the top of my to-do list, but I figured if I had the opportunity, why not? Two hours later, and we're sitting in the bleachers of the Panama Canal Visitor Center. My buddy Jan and Chris from Georgia, what's up Chris, the state were with me. The canal itself wasn't a letdown, but at the same time, it was, I wasn't overly impressed. It was like the opposite of a magic trick. And a magic trick, the magic lies in the accomplishment of the illusion without detection. Successfully completing what is thought to be improbable is the excitement. With the canal, it was the opposite. What was thought to be impossible and was already completed... <laughs> what was thought to be impossible was already completed. The magic of the canal was in the history of creating it. All of the engineers, all of the time, most impressively, the amount of people from various cultures and backgrounds coming together to complete it. Watching the ships go by, I appreciated who I was with. Jan was a sailor, so of course this was like porn to him. Chris was a traveler like myself. As much as he appreciated the backpacking party lifestyle, he was still very much curious of culture and customs. The Panama Canal had, had him asking questions and searching for answers. It was later that evening when Jan asked me, You said you're going to Nicaragua, right? <clears throat> I have a few weeks to get there, but yeah, that's, that's the end goal. I finished fixing up my boat today and I have a slot open for tomorrow's departure to Bocas. You want to go? All I ask is that tomorrow, before we leave, you pitch towards some groceries for a, a couple of days. <clears throat> I'm not sure where Bocas is. Bocas is. Is it on the way? Jan gave me one of his signature smiles. Buddy, Bocas is everything. You'll never want to leave. Fast forward. Cuidado. Disculpe. Apologizing, I swing my left uh, shoulder back and narrowly dodge a football-sized fish being hurled my way. Bumping into the back of another man, I notice he's weighing a fish nearly the length of my body and twice the thickness. I was at the Panama City Fish Market, and Chris and I were getting some early morning breakfast. I enjoyed having him around. He was very strong in his beliefs, but when contested, he was respectful of your stance as well. One of the few people you can truly argue with and learn from at the same time. It was a brief breakfast today. I had to get back to the hostel to meet up with Jan and see what the plans were for sending the Bocas. When I saw him eating his pancakes and bananas, I could tell something was off. He wasn't his typical perky self. Looking up from his meal and, and paper, he, uh, he spotted me. Pablo, mate. <laughs> I'm sorry. The weather is looking rough for the next few days. I'm postponing the trip. In his face, I could read that, his, that this disappointed him more than it did me. Any chance you could wait another couple of days? We'll be there five or six days from now if it all goes well. You said Bocas is on the border of Costa Rica, right? Jan nodded. I'm not sure I can. My buddy Carlos is meeting me in Nicaragua. It was true. I was on a time crunch and had less than two weeks to get to Leon, Nicaragua. Bef <laughs> being this, being that this was my first time traveling in these countries and I still had parts of Panama and all of Costa Rica to travel to, I wanted to make sure I wouldn't miss meeting him. Jan sighed. I'm sorry I couldn't make it happen, but you know what that means, right? His boyish grin started showing. That means we have time to cause some mischief and have some drinks before you leave. I laughed. What do you have in mind? Walk around Casco Viejo? Fuck no, are you crazy? It's way too hot. Tonight is expat night in the bar downstairs. Let's grab some beer, throw on a movie in the theater room and pregame. I smiled and shook my head. It wasn't even noon. After the bananas and pancakes, we started making our way downstairs into the store for some beer. At the base of the stairs, we ran into Chris. 
Georgia, what are you doing? Come grab some beer with us. We'll go and have some drinks and watch a movie in the, in the theater. Jan was always positive, definitely an extrovert. Okay, guys, I'm on a spiritual quest today. Panama has a mountain that you can climb, they say, on clear days. If you stand at the peak, you can see the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean at the same time. Chris was a unique individual, and when he had his mindset on something, he wouldn't steer from his plans. For a second, I wished I could be in his shoes. I never considered the possibility of being able to see two great oceans on one day from the same peak, same place. Spiritual quest aside, Jan and I were on a mission to get the most out of our last day in Panama City. Coca-Cola lunch and some beers with the movie <coughs> with the movie called our name. We finished lunch, then rounded up a decent crowd for the movie. Maybe 15 of us. Maybe 15 of us shared drinks and watched Into the Wild. Appropriate, considering all of us were on the search for something beyond ourselves. It's part one. If you want to read or see part two, let me know, and uh, I'll try to work on getting